I had very low mood, panic attacks, um, struggling to sort of function on a daily basis really. And like panicky, I was waking up having panic attacks in the night and in the day and I didn't want to do anything and crying a lot and just worrying and overthinking about everything. The symptoms of postnatal depression are, are far reaching. There's a very wide spectrum for, for many mothers. So not everybody will have all the same symptoms, but very common symptoms are low mood, high anxiety levels, experiencing panic attacks, a sense of lack of enjoyment, a sense of not really being able to look forward to anything, a sense of dread, some women will find it quite difficult connecting with their children sometimes. Just a real sense that you don't feel like the person that you were before. Um, there's a big stigma attached to mums actually asking for help with their mental health when they have children um, because of the fears of losing their children, um, not people judging them because they, they're not coping very well. But it's really important that mothers seek help and that they seek out any help they can to help them with their mental health at this particular time because it can be really dangerous if they don't. You're in that place and you're very alone that, um, with a baby um, and things are not feeling too comfortable. I think it's really important for them to actually have um, a support network and they find that within Mothers in Mind and within this group. And, they help each other, they help each other with each other's babies. Just come to talk and some come to craft because they really enjoy the craft. And some come just so that they've got the space not to be holding baby or so that, you know, that they can just meet other mums. A lot of our mums are isolated or lonely and don't have big social connections nearby to where they live or just moved into the area. So for many mums, it's just a really safe, confidential space where they can come and be themselves, is what we always encourage them to do um, throughout their journeys with maternal mental health. Well, I'm, it's a struggle for me so I'm not gonna lie. Um, like I said, I've only been coming for a couple of weeks um, and I normally come with my volunteer. Um, but it's, it's a big step for me to be doing this, but uh, it's really encouraging that I can be here and be with other mums who get it. And then we do lots of gentle phone calling and text messaging just to encourage them along because for some mums that's a really difficult step to come out of the house and into a whole group setting. Um, our group doesn't work for every mum. Um, we always say, you know, groups aren't for everyone. But if you, once you've stepped in, my, I will say the bravest step you ever make is to walk through the door um, and then you'll find your support network and you'll find your safety and you'll be able to seek the support you need. For Mothers in Mind at the moment, we're obviously running in three areas. Um, our biggest problem probably is funding. Um, so being able to fund these support groups um, is really, really difficult. We're forever begging for money as I call it or the management are obviously trying to get extra funding to make sure that our groups continue to run. needing more funds coming in and um, particularly when the demand for their services seems to be escalating um, given everything that's happened in the last couple of years so rolling out support groups would be beneficial and have a domino effect against the uptake on the phone lines and all these kinds of things um, because quite simply a lot of potential service users don't have a support group near them so they will be using the phone service um, whereas if we had more support groups in place um, it might take a little bit of the pressure off of the phone line and I think 
some people have maybe came to us before um, really interested about setting a support group up but they can only get places or rooms that are mm. they have to pay for and they can't they can't afford it the support groups that we have up and running at the moment again apart from doing fundraising they are very welcome to apply for sort of local authority funds and grants mm. um so you know anything within their local authorities that maybe tick the mental health box or whatever they are more than welcome to apply for um and that will give them some support on the way as well but yeah they're doing that at a very localized level local authorities are are sort of the the tool that's easiest for support groups to tap into um because they know their areas as well um and they can connect with them and use their support group as the base and the for the funding